All right, so happy Thursday. Did I say happy Thursday? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. So here we go. How do we do this? So we, what we did yesterday when we had the square root of a fraction, you could you could ask yourself, okay, look at this fraction. Oops, what's going on? Let's look at this fraction and just figure out what times itself gives me 4 over 25. Or if you have a fraction inside a radical, you can separate it and give the numerator its own radical and the denominator its own radical and then work out the numerator and then work out the denominator and then there you go you have a fraction as your answer and two fifths makes sense because two fifths times two fifths gives me four twenty fifths right so we can do the same thing here we can separate it we can put a cube root of one up here and a cube root of 27 down here but this fraction is negative so we can decide that the negative doesn't go to both numbers. You see how it's right in the middle? We can put the negative with the 1, or we can put the negative with the 27. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I chose to put it with the 1. So I have the cube root of negative 1 over the cube root of 27. And again, cube root is just the inverse of cubing something, putting something to the third power. So the way I simplify this is... I make my insides, I make the radicand, the inside of the radical, I make it something to the third power if I can. And if I look at negative 1, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, right? These two negatives cancel out. So I'm left with, yes, this is my ring finger, don't worry. I'm left with a negative, so it gives me negative 1. So this cancel cancels and I get negative one in my numerator. And then what's the cube root of 27? Well, let's think about it. The cube root of 27, well 27, <gasps> 27 is a perfect cube. 27 is three to the third power. And the reason I do that is because I want a third power to cancel out with that third root. And I'm left with three in the, numer in the denominator. And so my answer is negative one third. And that makes sense. <clears throat> that makes sense because what is negative one third times negative one third times negative one third. Well, one times one times one is one, and three times three times three is 27. And then negative times negative is positive, and positive times negative is negative. So I get negative one over 27, which is what I have in here. So it works. Oh, my, my head's in the way. Get out of the way. Yeah, makes sense? Yes, no, thumbs up, yes, no. Give me something, guys. Give me something, people. All right, I got two thumbs up and two checks mark. Two check marks. Someone said, can I repeat it? Of course. So first thing I do, if I have a fraction inside a radical, I separate it. And so I put a radical on the top with the numerator, and a radical on the bottom with the denominator. And since this fraction is negative, that means this negative sign can go either with the top or the bottom, the numerator or the denominator. I decided to put it up here with the numerator. And so now I'm just going to work on the numerator. So what's the cube root of negative 1? Well, the way I like to simplify radicals is I like to Think to myself, what does a cube root mean? It means it's the inverse of cubing a number or putting something to the third power. So I'm going to change my insides, the guts, right, of the radicand of the radical to something to the third power so it can cancel out. So I know negative 1, I can rewrite as negative 1 to the third power because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 because, again, these two negatives cancel, give you positive, and you're left with one negative. Don't worry, that's my ring finger. And so these cancel out, and so I'm left with negative 1 in the numerator. And then again, 27, I can rewrite that. That's a perfect cube. So I can rewrite 27 as 3 to the third power because I want to write it as a third power so it can cancel with the third root because third powers and third roots cancel each other out. And so those cancel, so I'm left with 3 in the denominator. And so my answer is negative 1 third. So the cube root of negative 1 27th is negative 1 third. And this is my work that I checked. It works. Negative one third times negative one third times negative one third is negative one twenty seventh. What we have in here, so it worked. 
So again, so cube root is just the inverse of cubing something, or you can think of a cube root asking, what can I multiply to itself three times to get this number? That's what a cube root means. What can I multiply to itself three times to get this number? And the answer is negative one third, because if I multiply this to itself three times, I get that number, the radicand. All right, and then we go down to the fourth roots, and it's basically asking, what multiplied to itself four times gives me this? Or it's also saying, I'm going to cancel out anything to the fourth power. So if there's, this is to the fourth power, it would cancel out and I'd get a whole number. So let's think about that. Hmm, 2401. If we look at our list, if we look at our list from yesterday, I don't think 2401 was on the list. I don't think we got that far. How did 27 turn into 3? Cube root. Cube root. 27 turned into 3 cubed. 27 turned into 3 cubed. And then the cubed and the third root canceled each other out. It's the cube root of 27, which is 3. So someone asked that in the, in the chat. Mr. How did 27 turn into 3? It, it didn't. The cube root of 27 turned into 3 because 27 is 3 cubed and then they cancel out. Remember, cube root's just asking what times itself 3 times gives me this result. Or cancel this out with the cube and I'll get the result. Same thing. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Same thing with negative 1, exactly. Negative 1, I changed to negative 1 to the third power because that's what it is. Negative 1 to the third power gives you negative 1. And then the third power and the cube, I'm sorry, the third power and the third root cancel each other out, which is just saying negative 1 to the third power. The, the cube root of negative 1 means I have to multiply this to itself three times to get me that. And so when we go to fourth roots, we're saying the same thing. What number times itself four times? Like three times three times three times three. Well, that's 81. That won't work. So if you can't think of it, then can you change? So this is a fourth root. Can you change the inside to something to the fourth power? Can you change this radicand to something to the fourth power? So that way they can just cancel and we'll have our answer. Well, let's use our handy dandy calculator to see. Um, well, six to the fourth power. Well, okay, let's try it. What's five to the fourth power? Right? Is five to the fourth power 4,096? No, five to the fourth power, if we think in our brain, five to the fourth power is 625. That's not it. What about six to the fourth power? Mm, closer, it's 1296, but it's not there. What about 7 to the 4th power? Bingo, bingo, 2401. Nope, that's not it either. I'm thinking of this one. Oh, is this the one we were supposed to do? <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll stick to this one. So no, but we have we have a number now that's going to help us for over here, right? But what about 8 to the 4th power? Someone already said in the chat, but it's okay. Let's see. 8 to the 4th power is 4096. 4096. So guess what? It's 8. 8 to the 4th power is 4096. So that means we can cancel, cancel, and my answer is 8. Yeah? Everyone good? So there's two ways to look at this. There's two ways to look at this. We can just look at it like this and say, okay, what number times itself four times gives us this? And the answer is eight because eight times eight times eight times eight is 4096. And the second way we can look at it is, okay, since this is a fourth root, can I change the inside to something to the fourth power so it cancels? And then there's my answer. And the answer is yes, eight to the fourth power. We, so we change 4096 to eight to the fourth power. Cancel, cancel. My answer is eight. And then now we could do the same thing over here, 2401. We just did it right here with our little list. 
with our little list, it's 2401, 7 to the fourth power is 2401. So we can come over here and say, oh, we can change that inside to 7 to the fourth power because 2401 is 7 to the fourth power. And then cancel, cancel. My answer is 7. I don't know if you noticed, but we're getting all whole numbers, right? All of our answers are whole numbers. Which means we've been working with numbers that are perfect squares, perfect cubes, and perfect fourths, right? That's how we always start things. Perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect fourths to give us whole numbers. It's not always going to be that way. Let's do our last one. Let's do our last one. So again, I have a fraction, so I'm going to separate them. So I'm going to have a fourth root of 81 up top and the fourth root of 16 on the bottom. And so 81, I can think of as three times three times three times three. And so I can say, oh, 81 is three to the fourth. And I can think of 16 as two times two times two times two. Mister, but can't you think of it as eight times eight? I mean, I mean eight, um, four times four? Yes, you can. But four times four doesn't help us because we're looking for things that are the fourth power, right? Four squared isn't going to help us. We need things that go to the fourth power, and that's two, because two times two times two times two is 16. So that's two to the fourth, fourth root, and then cancel, 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 and we're left with three over two. Three over two. And because this is an even index, I cannot have any negatives in there. I had an odd index, I'm, it's okay to have a negative in there. Remember, because if you have an odd number, if you have an odd number, these two cancel, the even number of negatives cancel each other out and you're left with an extra negative that gives you negative. So you can have negatives inside an odd index. You cannot have negatives in an even index. Because an even index means I have, like this one, I have four. If these both, if they're all negative, because remember, we're multiplying something to itself. If all four are negative, all these are going to cancel. There's no more late negatives left. Okay, so um, so be careful. So there's a little table down here, right? Little table down here, what we're going to fill out right now. But before we do that, are there any questions on how we found these roots? Square roots, cube roots, fourth roots. Those are the. There are fifth roots and sixth roots and seventh roots and eighth roots. There's, there's, it goes on forever. But these are the most basic ones we're going to do. So are there any questions on this before we move on? Yes, I'm staring at those Oreos. They're staring back at me. All right, so we have a little, little table here. You don't have to... Um, so remember, the radicand is the inside, right? Are the guts? The radicand are the guts, and the index is that number outside in the little check mark. So if I have an even index, and it's positive on the inside, I'm going to have two roots that are real numbers, right? Just like this. If I have positive inside, if I have a positive number inside a radical with a even index like a two or a four then i'm just going to get a real root a real number a real positive number we should say that huh it's going to be positive because positive times positive gives you positive a real positive number if I have an odd index and I have positive number inside, I'm going to have a real positive number. And I'm going to have one. Well, somebody just told me in the chat, well, mister, if you have two roots, are they both going to be positive? 
this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets tricky because because <clears throat> you, you can have negative. So you, basically, yes, technically you're going to have real numbers. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I know this is where it gets tricky. When you take the square root, right, you see here I took the square root. I could have got a second answer and said the square root of negative 4 squared. And then that cancels with that. And I also get negative 4. That's why I get two answers. That's why we always have plus or minus. So here's where it gets tricky. Yes, I'm going to have two roots, one positive, one negative. See, maybe that's why I kind of don't like this table. Maybe, maybe we should, you know what? You know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't want to confuse you. Let's not do the table, but let's, let's think about this. You can have, basically, let's just say this. You can have negative numbers you can have negative numbers in a in an odd index radical you cannot have negative numbers in an even index radical so that's basically the main thing i'm trying to prove so so don't worry about this table yeah this, i think this table some people are asking me questions in here don't worry about that table just basically you cannot have negative numbers in an even radical and you can you can have negatives in an odd radical and when i'm asking you for a square root or i'm asking you for any root like a square root you see how i have two options it could be negative or positive um we're looking for the principal root. I think it says it here. Yes. Yeah, so if a radical, so here we go. If a radical has more than one root, like when I take the square root, the radical sign indicates only the principal or positive root. So when I say square root of 16, when I see square root of 16, I only am talking about, and this is usually, we're only talking about the positive root. Technically, this is also a root, but... If I want the negative, we would have put plus or minus in the front, right? So let's, we're, from now on, we're just going to, yes, square root of 16 can be positive 4 and negative 4. But for our purposes, when they're asking for a square root, look at the sign in front of the square root. That's the one they're looking for. So there's a positive. There's nothing in front of the square root, so we're only looking for the positive principal root. Okay, that's called the principal root. That's what, we, that's what I put right here. So don't worry about, <clears throat> do not worry about this chart. I don't want to confuse people. Basically, this chart was just trying to, trying to show you the fact that you can only have negative numbers in an odd radical, an odd index radical, okay? And when I take the square root or the fourth root, because the fourth root you can also multiply negatives because all the negatives will cancel out, you're only asking for the principal or positive root. That's the only one we're looking for unless it has a negative sign or a plus minus in the front okay so for instance if i ask for the square root of 117 i'm taking the square root of a positive number so i only want the positive answer so what times itself gives you 117 hmm the square root of 117 is that a perfect square Am I able to change 117 into something that's squared? Like if that was 100, I could say 10 squared, but 117, no, I'm not able to do that. 117 is what? Hmm, it's, it's so, so Mr., what do I do? Do I just punch this into a calculator and get a decimal? You can do that, and for most real-life problems, you want to do that. So if I punch this into a calculator, right, or handy-dandy, hold on, where is it, where is it? Handy dandy calculator. If I punch in the square root of 117, I get 10.8. Well, it's actually 10.8166538383, so on, so on. So, but if I just go with decimal, it's 10 point, about 10.8. And that makes sense because the square root of 100 is 10. So it's a little over 10, 10.8. But sometimes we want to keep the radical. 
right? This is an approximation. This is approximate. When we when we get it to decimal form and we and we round it, that's an approximate answer. If you're being asked to give an exact answer, that means if you want an exact answer, that means you keep the radical. That means you keep the radical. Okay, mister, so I'll just keep 117. Okay, you can keep 117, but here's my question. That 117 isn't a perfect square, but does it have a perfect square inside of it? Is there a perfect square hidden inside 117? And the way to find that out is let's break it down. And here's where the simplifying radicals gets a little complicated, but not too much. Let's break down 117. Can you break down 117? What times what gives you 117? So someone said in the chat, 100? No, 100 isn't a factor of 117. When I'm talking about a perfect square hidden inside 117, I'm talking about if I broke down 117 into its factors, is there a factor in there that I can take the square root of? And so if I look at 117, use your calculator, play around with the numbers, yeah, 9 and 13. 9 times 13 is 117. And guess what 9 is? Guess what 9 is? 9 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. And so I can rewrite 117 as the square root of 9 times 13. And then I can split this, right? When I have factors inside a radical, I can separate them and give 9 its own radical and give 13 its own radical. And so what's the square root of 9? What is the square root of 9? I can do that. That's 3, isn't it? So this turns into 3, square root of 13. 13 is a prime number. I can't break it down. And there are no perfect squares inside its factors. So guess what? That's my exact answer. 3 square root of, uh, <laughs> sorry, 3 square root of 13. I just simplified my radical. Without, and, and a lot of times mathematicians want exact answers, meaning they don't want a decimal. Right? They don't want a decimal because a decimal approximates. They want an exact answer, meaning we keep the radical. And so there's my exact answer. I break down what's inside, and I try to find out if there are any factors that are perfect squares. And then if they are, then I break those down. Does that make sense? You guys remember doing this in Algebra 1? I think we did this early in the year, too. Any questions on how I did this? So square root of 117... Well, 117 is not a perfect square, but if I broke down 117 like I did over here into its factors, I saw it's 9 times 13, and 9 is a perfect square. So I rewrite 117 as 9 times 13, and then I separate the 9 and the 13, give 9 its own radical, give 13 its own radical. Square root of 9 is 3. And square root of 13 just stays the square root of 13. So this is a more simplified, exact way of giving my answer. Now, if I was in construction, um, um, like my brother, he works, he, he texts me a lot while he's at work. He's, in, he's on interior construction where he works on um, building the interior of buildings, right? Some other people come and they build the, out, the outside, but once, once they've built the foundation and all the floors and everything, he usually goes into the office buildings and he sets up all the insides. And he sends me a lot of text of like um, to find side lengths and stuff and, he, and square roots and stuff. So for him, someone in real life that's using radicals, this is more useful to him, 10.8, because he has to measure it out with the, with the ruler, with, the, with measuring tape. For mathematicians, this is a better answer. Because it's more nerdy and it's more exact. Right? This is an approximation. My brother gets, if he gets 10.8, 10.81, he gets around there. He's like, okay, yeah, 10.8. I only need to go up to, to the tenths place and I'm good. Um, he can do his measurements and things work out. But for mathematicians, we like the exact answer where we keep the radical and we just simplify the insights. Does that make sense? Let me see a thumbs up, a yes, a hallelujah, a something, or a no, I don't get it. All right, I'm seeing a lot of check marks. Actually, I'm seeing two check marks and two thumbs up. All right, so here we go. So let's try this one. Four 
square root of 320. So I have 4 times the square root of 320. Well, let's break down 320. Let's, let's break down 320. Now, if you can't, this is the way I like to break it down. I just like to break it down um, like this. So, oops, not erase it. No. So, three t oh, my gosh, what's going on? 320 is 32 times 10. 32 is 16 times 2. And then I circle the prime numbers. 10 is 5 times 2. 16 is 8 times 2. 8 is 4 times 2. 4 is 2 times 2. And so if I look here, I 320 is, how many 2s do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 6 of them, right? So 320 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Times 5. You guys see that? So I just broke down 320 into its prime factors. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. If I look here, this is a square root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair up those two. Then I'm going to pair up those two. Then I'm going to pair up those two. You guys see what I did there? And so this becomes square root of... 4 times 4 times 4 times 5. And I can separate them. Square root of 4 times square root of 4 times square root of 4 times square root of 5. And don't forget I had this 4 in the beginning. Right? And so let's simplify everything. Well, what's f that's 4. And what's that square root of 4? That's 2. And what's that square root of 4? That's 2. And what's that square root of 4? That's 2. And then square root of 5 just stays square root of 5. And so multiply everything outside the radical. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 8 times 4 is 32. Square root of 5. And there you go. I'll give you a second to copy that. So I'm going to stop here because class ends in 5 minutes. But we're going to try these two tomorrow. And then um, we're going to try a few with variables, right? And then that's pretty much it. This is, pretty, this is a pretty simple um, lesson because you've done it before. But I wanted to make sure you understood it because um, after this, we're going to start talking about how to change radicals into exponents. What? A radical is an exponent. No way. Yes, it is. But I thought it was the opposite of an exponent, mister. That's where they cross out. Yes, I said it's the inverse. So what's the inverse of a whole number? But we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Tomorrow we're going to continue practicing this. Oh, if you are in my if you are in my advisory, don't forget after this at 1150, even if you're in my second advisory, with any advisor and you need to go to that meeting with Miss Lopez. I'm going to take role based on who was in that meeting and she's going to send me a list of who was in that meeting. So please, if you are in my H or my L advisory, and then please let everyone else know in that advisory if you know them and they forgot that you have to show up at 11.50 to Ms. Lopez's um, um, presentation today. Okay, at 11.50, you do not go to my, my advisory. I'm not having advisory today. You guys go straight to that meeting. Okay, H or L. I know the ones that are in my L advisory, we usually have class at 12.50. Nope, you go straight at 11.50 and then you can have your lunch after the meeting. Or you can have your lunch during the meeting. Okay. All right, everyone. We will continue this tomorrow. And um, have a great rest of your day. And uh, take care. Yes, I'm going to post both videos. I'm sorry. I didn't post the video last night. I got a little busy. Um, but yes, I will post today's video and yesterday's video up today.